And let's jump back to Philadelphia and our senior U.S. correspondent, Mike Wagenheim, who's being joined by a special guest who has a reason to be happy, certainly about this election cycle. That's right, Kyle. Back behind us is the Pennsylvania Convention Center. The ballots continue to be counted back there in the presidential race. One man's future, though, is not in doubt, and that's the guy next to me, Brendan Boyle, U.S. Congressman from Philadelphia's 2nd District, the convincing winner in your general election yesterday. First off, congratulations. Yeah, well, thank you. Last night, teachers, you never take anything for granted, so I'm very happy to be reelected by the citizens of Philadelphia to a fourth term to represent them in Washington. The presidential race proving democracy is sometimes messy. What are your thoughts on this presidential race and how it's shaping up right now? You, you know, the irony is, uh, at least locally, yesterday there were remarkably few problems at the polls. I think the fact that we had so many people vote by mail actually reduced the, uh, the potential for what could have been long lines uh, at polling places, especially the need for six feet of distancing. But right now what we're seeing behind us is democracy. People like myself, my wife, my father, who cast their ballots early uh, because of concern out of this, this pandemic are now right behind us having those ballots counted. That's democracy. There's nothing nefarious going on that's happening here in Pennsylvania, as well as uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, et cetera. And then when all the votes are counted, let's see who won. That is the system. We're going to find out hopefully soon enough. Meanwhile, the pollster said there was going to be a blue wave in the House of Representatives. It didn't materialize. No sitting Republican lost. What are you going back to in Washington now in, in the House of Representatives? Yeah, well, first, I, I wouldn't want to be a pollster today. My job security might be, uh, might be in question. I, I will say, you know, two years ago, there was a blue wave. Uh, we won 40 seats, um, uh, Republican-held seats, uh, won the majority in the House. We have uh, maintained that majority, so it's something I, I don't take for granted. It's only the second time uh, in the last 30 years that Democrats have both won a majority and then were able to keep it in the next election. Uh, so that's important. Uh, the House of Representatives, the majority is everything. Uh, I will say for the Senate, though, there's real disappointment because this is now, after 2016, especially uh, two of the last three elections when we as Democrats thought we were about to take the majority and fall just short. So I do think in that regard there needs to be some, some soul searching. But finally, as far as the presidential election, uh, let's be clear of all the results, that's the best one. Joe Biden probably within the next few hours will be declared the winner by the networks, even not including Pennsylvania. <laughs> some of my constituents. Um, even not including Pennsylvania, he will likely be at 270 electoral votes because of insurmountable leads now in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Arizona. He may well be over 300 electoral votes by the time it's, it's all said and done. Um, he will have, I think as of right now, has received more votes for President of the United States than any person in history and has won by a bigger margin in Wisconsin and Michigan than Donald Trump did four years ago. So it's pretty clear that, that actually the big winner of last night is Joe Biden. It might not have been by the 10 points that some polls were saying, but it is nonetheless an impressive victory, a majority of the vote, and a majority electoral college. Much has been made in the Jewish community and the pro-Israel community about how a Biden White House might work with Israel. You have much experience in the Middle East. You sat for two terms in the uh, Foreign Affairs Committee and Subcommittee on the Middle East and North Africa. You've been to Israel a number of times. You've yeah. dealt with the Syria portfolio, Turkey as well. What are your thoughts on a Biden White House dealing with Israel, dealing with the Middle East? Where do you see that, that path leading? Yeah, so first, I, I'm very proud to be a strong supporter of a close U.S.-Israel relationship. There is bipartisan support for that on Capitol Hill. That will continue, uh, actually regardless of which party holds the White House. I've now seen that under both a Democratic administration and a Republican administration. Um, I think that Joe Biden is someone who realizes how important Israel is to the United States as our closest ally in the Middle East. It's also a country that uh, in many ways is fighting our battles for us and has the misfortune to live in a beautiful house in a very difficult neighborhood. And Israel faces real threats on its northern border, its northeastern border, from the Gaza Strip, all around the region. So making sure the United States stands by its close ally, Israel, is both the right thing to do, but also in American interest.
Israel turned into a real political football in this election cycle. And you represent a heavily uh, Jewish area in northeast Philadelphia, area I grew up in. What do you make of the split now in the Jewish community politically? There really seems to be this divide now between Democratic supporting Jews and Republican supporting Jews, and there doesn't really see, seem to be an end to the bickering coming. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that I agree with that. First, I mean, polls show that about 70 to 75 percent of Jewish Americans continue to support Democratic candidates and vote Democratic. I would say, though, that just of friends of mine who are Jewish or supporters of mine, there's a diversity of opinion. I have some Jewish Democratic supporters of mine who believe I'm too pro-Israel. Um, and then I, I have some uh, Jewish Americans who I'm friends with or supporters of mine who, who believe I have exactly the right position. So I, I think that, you know, uh, Jewish Americans are just like any other group of Americans. There's a diversity of viewpoints. I mean, that's why I always laugh when someone wants to spew anti-Semitism and pretend as if there's some sort of one set policy on any issue. Uh, it's, it's so incredibly naive. I, I, I don't find that at all. I mean, I engage with a number of constituents of mine that are very much on opposite ends of the political spectrum. I want to ask you about the country as a whole right now. The coronavirus pandemic really brought out a lot of tensions that have been simmering yeah. for quite some time now. How does the country as a whole, Democrat, Republican, anything in between, how does the country as a whole get, get on the path towards some sort of reconciliation here? You know, um, that you've just touched on to me one of the big, almost existential questions of our time right now. Even something as simple as wearing a mask ended up becoming a, a political football, at least initially for months, when the president was uh, not exactly an enthusiastic adopter of, of wearing masks and it suddenly took on a partisan tinge that you don't see in other societies or other countries. I, that's probably one of the reasons why I was such a strong supporter of Joe Biden from day one. He, he literally, uh, in his opening speech, as well as his closing speech a year and a half later, talked about restoring the soul of the nation and uniting us. He was in Northeast Philly, uh, at my campaign office 48 hours ago talking about that was a strong desire as president and he has a record of doing that of working with republicans so i i think that we need to to give him an honest shot i also think frankly and i'm not just saying this because i'm a democrat having donald trump leave the scene will be healthy he is such a divisive toxic figure who never attempts to reach out to the other side or people who disagree with him uh, i think just his leaving the political scene will be healthier for our process. I want to thank you so much for your time, Congressman. We appreciate it. Representative Brendan Boyle from Philadelphia's 2nd District. He's heading back to Washington. What's waiting for him in Washington yet to be determined. Back to you in the studio, Kalev. Yet to be determined. We're all waiting on that. Mike Wagenheim, thank you for that.